I will open my camera. This is Ali Ahmed. Actually, I am a research engineer at uh, INRAE of uh, Pays de la Loire in France. Um, I'm working in the development of a deep learning algorithm for uh, applied for plant science to do classification, segmentation, denoising, and etc. I will just uh, point some. I will talk uh, a bit generally about the deep learning. We know that uh, we are using deep learning daily. We are using that by when we are sending mails, for example. We have the. We, we can see that we have some spams that comes to our mail this is the deep learning we are also using that in the speech recognition the natural language processing when you use the google translate in netflix when we are at home and other technologies used in imaging devices also in our phones when we are taking photos there are some application based on deep learning and also there are several features application of deep learning to in the in the, in the i mean the self-driving cars or uh, crime predictions and the creation of perfumes and etc. Uh, the deep learning specially used for image analysis. I will revisit this chart here uh, of the application of deep learning on, on the image analysis. We can do different type of application going from the classifications, the segmentation, the tracking and the reconstruction of images. We saw this morning that we have a lot of uh, application in 3D imaging. So there are also 3D reconstruction of the image, 3D segmentation, tracking, and the classification. And there were also a lot of algorithms that were developed to do each time, to do, to to perform in, in this in each specific task. And we have also different categories of architectures that are mainly based on the convolutional neural network. So to just define what is a convolutional neural network, it's a type of artificial and uh, neural network used for image analysis and it is the fundamental uh, fundamental and basic build, uh, building blocks used by the most uh, uh, deep learning image analysis architectures so it consists of three main blocks if you want to to see the first block is the convolutional layer we have different convolutional blocks where we are uh, the machine uh, configure or define randomly some uh, filters with different weights and we ensure uh, we, we precise and we give the number of the filters that we want to define for the machine and these sliding windows will, will scan the uh, input image and to uh, subtract some feature maps as we can see here we have some features for example some filters and the corresponding feature maps from these filters applied on one of, of the nine image of the famous MNIST dataset. So this is the first, blo first block of the convolutional neural network. The second block is the max pooling or the pooling layer where we will be, we will do downsampling of the feature maps to extract more f complex features. And also the second advantage of this pooling layer is to reduce the size of the image then this means reducing the computational time uh, the competition time and finally the third main layer of the cnn is the fully connected layer which is the decision layer where we have uh, the neural network we have the neural network we will do the classification for example or we, where, where we perform the classification task to have the different outputs i was talking that this is the cnn was is most used in all the application of deep deep learning and we focus now on the segmentation only so for the segmentation i just want to point that we have different type of segmentation so we first we have the semantic segmentation where we are assigning for each class for each pixel of the original image one class so here we will have like binary class we'll have uh, only two classes each pixel will be classified to be the uh, the background and or to be the uh, the object inside the image this is the semantic segmentation however there are other type of the segmentation which is the instance segmentation so here we will not assign only two classes to each pixel but also will assign a class for each segmented object inside the image as we can see in this example so we have two different type of this of that segmentation the most used architectures for the segmentation uh, with deep learning 
it, uh, for example, we start with the SIGNET, which is the deep convolutional encoder decoder architecture for image segmentation. And as we can see from this illustration here, we have the image volume in the output, uh, in the input, the image volume, or if we, we can use also the 2D image, we have an encoder part, which is different, which is several blocks of convolutional network, several blocks of CNN. We have different convolutional layers followed by binarization layers followed by activation functions, the ReLU act, activation function and pooling layers. And in this block, we will try to encode the input image into different feature maps, as we can see here, the encoder, the main function of the encoder is to transfer or to encode the input image into different feature maps according to the number of convolutional blocks that we are using and extracting this means extracting the main features and the more most useful information from the image the other part of the uh, segmentation of the segment uh, segment is the decoder part and here as we can see here we are reconstructing the uh, the low resolution feature maps to get at the output the high resolution segmented image as we can see here so basically the decoder part is to convert the encoded data to its original form we convert the low resolution encoder feature maps to the full input resolution feature maps based on the max pooling indices that we were using during the encoder part so as we can see in this example, we have the original image, for example, and the max pooling or the pooling layers, so we can use the two by two max pooling. We get the four neighbors, pixel neighbors, each four pixel neighbors, and we took the max from them. This is the encoder part, the max pooling part. So we have here five, we have six, seven, and eight. This is the max pooling part in the encoder uh, part of the uh, signet. And the other hand, in the other part, we have the max unpooling or the upsampling. So we use the indices of this max pooling to, re to reconstruct the, the high resolution image from it. So as we can see here, we took the indices and then we construct the original image by putting zeros and filling the values where we have the max pooling indices. This is the encoder decoder part of the signet. We we'll go to another architecture, which is the unit, which is also similar to the signet. We have encoder part, which is also known as the contraction part, and we have the expensive expansion part, which is the, which is the deco uh, decoder part. But the difference between the signet and the unit that we have a skip connection between each block of the encoder part and we transfer the feature map to the corresponding block in the decoder part like that we are uh, like that we are creating we are taking the information from the encoder and reinforcing the the information in the decoder part to have better segmentation so in this uh, example here we can see that for, uh, for example here in the a we have the hela cells segmented using the semantic segmentation we have to binary classification or binary segmentation we have the background and the object in other case we can do also the instance segmentation we have different cells and we are assigning each clock to each cell of these uh, uh, to these cells so in the end here I will uh, say that how we can uh, also how we can evaluate our segmentation there are different type of metrics that we can use to evaluate our uh, the segmentation performance there are for example i will just uh, talk about the jacquard index index or also known as the intersection over union so we are taking the uh, the ratio of the area of overlap between the ground true and the result at the output of the segmentation over the area of union between them like that we can compute the uh, intersection of our union also there are the most used also metric for the segment to quantify the segmentation performance and the dice score where also it's the area of overlap multiplied by two over the area of union there are also other metrics such as the f1 score which is closely to the jacquard index and etc and for these metrics 
the closer of the metric to the one, then the model is more accurate, the segmentation is more efficient. Uh, in the afternoon, what we are going to see during the hands-on, we'll apply the unit to segment uh, 2D, the 2D nuclei using Colab and the TensorFlow Keras libraries. So on this, uh, during the afternoon, we'll, be, uh, we'll see how we can code and implement the unit architecture uh, using, uh, using Python and Notebook and how we can uh, also how we can optimize the different hyperparameters and how we can refine the the, the, the post uh, segmentation parameters to get the best uh, segmentation performance thank you any question thanks for the nice presentation at least I don't.